Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, with a true Tinnitus Classics exclusive. Now, some of you remarked when I did my talk on the 10 greatest living composers that we have no idea, you know, what will happen to these composers. Are they really great? Will the music survive? Should we even care if it does? What are we worrying about? What are our criteria for greatness? I mean, just a million questions all over the place. But I have the answer to all of them for you because, because you may recall that Tinnitus Classics issued a splendid recording um, of the multiverse version of all of the Beethoven string quartet performances that ever were or will be, thanks to the quantum quartet. Well, using the same technology, that is our fabulous decoherencizer, and the decoherencizer, which reduces quantum decoherence, I have been able to find out, to discover the names of the seven greatest living composers of the year 2775. And I'm going to be making recordings of all of them on Tinnitus Classics. Now, I don't have samples as of yet because the old decoherencizer is still getting like tuned up but I've got the names and I've got some fascinating information about who these people are and what the socioeconomic and political circumstances are um, in 2775. And, you know, I have seven of them actually, because as you can see with the decoherencizer here, you know, you place the cartridge into the, into the uh, slot and you press it down like that and voila, out pops the name and some information which you can then read on your computer. But we only have seven possible settings. So I could only get seven names here. I mean, we, we ignore this. I mean, there's nobody named Bagel or Defrost. So we're not worried about them. We're just worried about the composers. And, you know, I mean, and of course, you know, if you raise an eyebrow at the fact that there are these like, you know, reheat and cancel and other settings, you might as well, if you're going to have a decoherencizer, you might as well, you know, have it do other things. So this model, which is by Cuisinart, also functions as a toaster. And you can use it for either purpose, for either exploring the realm of quantum musical composition or for making breakfast, which I think is quite handy. Anyway, let's put this down. Let's talk about the seven composers of 2,775. The first is a fascinating personality. His name is Phlegmoid Llewellyn Dunproctor. No, Dernproctor. That's it. Phlegmoid Llewellyn Dernproctor. And he comes from the Independent Republic of Wales. So obviously something had happened to the United Kingdom by 2775. His specialty, evidently, was uh, vocal music. And there are two works that popped out of my decoherencizer when I, I probed further. The first is a delightful looking comic opera called Benny Hill. And you know what it's about. Um, I just think it's fantastic that, you know, Benny Hill's reputation survived that many hundreds of years to become the subject of a comic opera. And, you know, once I get the thing recorded, we will have the opportunity to compare the operatic version to the actual version, which is still in reruns all over the place. So we can check that out. But even more fascinating is an oratorio. It's called Dumbo's Wench. Now, from what I can gather, Dumbo's wench is Camilla Parker Bowles, which tells us immediately who Dumbo is, doesn't it? And it's, it, the oratorio is a tragedy. It concerns the last days of the British monarchy, which apparently occurred when, when King Charles decided to make her officially Queen Camilla and, and an angry crowd of you know, soccer hoodlums fell on them and cannibalized them completely. And that was it. There were, there were no more royalty people there. But this is the oratorio about it. And I have a feeling that, that uh, Mr. Dun, Dern Proctor, whatever his name is, Dern Proctor from the Independent Republic of Wales, um, was, you know, hard pressed to suppress his, his, his 
you know, sort of schadenfreude at the plot of Dumbo's Wench. But, you know, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait till it comes out and then we'll be able to decide for ourselves. Now, the next composer um, is, is even more interesting. Her name is, is Abragla Dominguez Tostada. She's from Mexico um, and she was a mixed media performance artist. And she created a musical, artistic, sculpture, uh, video, visual, I, I, it's very hard to tell exactly what it was. It was called Montezuma's Revenge, La Venganza de Montezuma. And, um, well, I, I can only imagine what that looks like um, as a mixed media performance art piece. And um, I, I just hope that um, it isn't what I think it is. Uh, but I have no idea because we don't know what La Venganza de Montezuma may have been in the year 2775. It could mean something entirely different. So let's not prejudge. We must keep on listening, no matter what it sounds like or looks like or smells like. Next. Oh, this was, this was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. This was a work by the greatest living composer on the planet, Baxia. Now, you know, Baxian composers have an issue because the whole planet is just obsessed, of course, with Arnold Bax. In fact, his name was Sir Arnold Bax, as we know, and the Baxians took that very seriously. And just as, you know, people take the names of great men, um, just about every male child on the planet Baxia goes by the name Sir. They don't even touch Arnold because that would be sacrilegious. They just are called Sir. So this composer, is, is his name is Sir, whoever he is, and he wrote the Stonehenge Concerto for Clavicle and Orchestra. Now, I thought that that was a typo. I thought it must be clavichord or clavecin or clavier or something like that, you know, but it's not. It's clavicle. So I have no idea what the clavicle is as a musical instrument. I mean, I know what else it is, but as a musical instrument, I don't know at all. But I am not at all surprised that he wrote the Stonehenge Concerto because, because the Baxians have never gotten over the Celtic twilight business of their, their founder and, and resident patron saint, Sir Arnold Bax. And so everything that they do has something to do with that stuff. I'm sure there's a Stonehenge opera, a Stonehenge symphony, a Stonehenge string quartet, a Stonehenge piano sonata. I mean, and they, and they, and they may all have been written by Sir or a different composer whose name is Sir. It's very difficult to tell. I mean, Baxia is such a confusing place. I, I, I mean, even when I was there, I, I could see, I could see the seeds of, of a complete confusion beginning to, beginning to spring forth in their cultural life. But maybe they'll straighten it out by, by 2975. I don't know. But right now, it's the Stonehenge Concerto for Clavicle and Orchestra by Sir. Um, the fourth contender, um, actually, I thought was, was very, very fascinating. This is, I, I'll, now, please, you know, forgive me if I don't get the pronunciation absolutely right. Um, it's a woman composer from Ghana, and her name is Boahinma Amponsa. Yes, Boahinma Amponsa. And she is the Dvorak of Ghana. I mean, there's no question about that. I've read extensively about her work. She's written in, in every possible medium. She's done opera, she's done symphonies, she's done quartets and, and, and piano works and concerti and oratorios and chamber music galore and songs. She seems to be an incredibly gifted, gifted composer. She's enormously celebrated in Ghana. And from what I can gather, her style is is squarely romantic nationalist. That is, it mixes native, you know, Ghanaian musical elements, which include all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, you know, there's high life, the pop, the pop music sort of idiom, which is combined with, with native drumming and then Ghanaian drumming is phenomenal. You got to believe me because I, I studied it a little bit and had a friend um, I had actually two friends. One was from Ghana, one was from Mali. 
and and they taught me a little bit about African drumming, and it's just a, a stunning medium. It really is. And I am dying to hear what um, Ms. Amponsa is able to do um, what, when combining that with, you know, sort of more Western musical elements. The reason, of course, that it has taken Ghana so long to get to the Dvorak of Ghana, I mean, you know, 600 and some odd years, was because it's taken that long for them to get past the, the current cultural appropriation, political correctness insanity, um, and then to be able to even write something in this style. And then, of course, there was the, the, the terrible legacy of colonialism and exploitation, which made it very, very difficult for native uh, Ghanaian composers to write in Western musical forms. But apparently, by 2775, that issue had been completely resolved. And so we have nothing but pleasure in store for us in exploring the music of, of Boahinma Amponsa. There, I think I got it better that time. The next composer, this is this is the, the fifth one who turned up on the decoherencizer when I checked it out. Um, oh, this one, this one is very interesting for, for its geopolitical content. Um, he's an Oriental or Asian, I shouldn't say, say Asian now, pardon me, an Asian composer. His name is Shun Lee West. And Shun Lee West um, is a an Asian American fusion kind of guy um, of a style that apparently began to, to form or become become current after China became the 63rd state of the United States in 2514. I mean, I really just want to go back and see how that happened. I'm completely, completely stunned by the fact that China would become the United States 60, 63rd, yeah, 63rd state. And I mean, first of all, I want to know what the what the other ones were before number 63. And I'm very, very curious to hear to hear Shun Li West's music because um, it, it, it sounds to me as though it's going to be a very, very fruitful amalgam of the two styles. And I'm not talking about things like, you know, the Yellow River Concerto and stuff like that. That's very sort of Hollywood-esque. Apparently, apparently, Mr. Mr. West or Mr. Shun or Mr. Lee, I'm not quite sure what it is, um, was, was extremely serious about forging a, a unique musical idiom. And it, this is the suite from his ballet, Dim Sum. And I mean, the Dim Sum Suite is, is marvelous because it comes in a, in, a, in a format which allows you to create your own suite. What you do is you get, you get like the menu of movements and then you select the, the dim sum that you would like to hear and it, you can play it in, in many, many different ways and you sort of create your own suite out of it, which sounds like a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to trying it. I think it should be just terrific. And um, I, I, I think that tinnitus classics, I mean, we have to solve the, the technical problem of how you are actually going to make the selection and what the menu is going to look like and, and you know, how much information you get about each movement so that you can create your very own dim sum suite. I think that's going to be totally cool. I really do. And just keep, remember that name, Shun Lee West. It really, I think, is going to come to signify something marvelous, at least after 2,775. I mean, we don't really know, but at least we'll have a, a sample before then. We won't have to wait that long. Then there's a very, very interesting interesting um, lady composer. Her name is, is Grajtetia Obratitia. And Grajtetia Obratitia comes from a country called called Plithvia, P-L-I-T-H-V-I-A. Now, from what I can gather, Plithvia is a country that consists of a union between Poland, Lithuania, and Latvia, and they decided to call it Plithvia. I think that probably a few hundred years before it became Plithvia, which is sort of the shorthand, it was called, it was called Poluthvia. 
but they, they, it's Eastern European, so they dropped out vowels all over the place. And the more, the more consonants they can have, the happier they are. You know that. Anyway, this piece is called Threnody for the Victims, period. It's obviously, obviously it recalls, you know, Penderecki's Threnody for the Victims of Hiroshima, but apparently by 2775, um, they just were concerned with victims and they all thought they were, so that's what it was, the Threnody for the Victims. It's for string orchestra and it promises to be extremely grim and harrowing, I'm sure. But um, there's a lot of music, actually. She got a lot of mention, Grajtetsia Obratutia, um, in, in the newspapers in Plithvia. And um, at some point, I hope to be able to highlight more of her work. Uh, maybe there's something cheerful in there. I doubt it, but you never know. And finally, finally, last but not least, this is really, really exciting. This is, believe it or not, at long last, it took until 2,775 to do it, but we finally have Sibelius's Eighth Symphony, realized by the Finnish composer Pickapeka, Pickapeka, Picklepep, Pickapeka, Picklepep, no, it's, let me do it slowly, Pickapeka, Picklepepepa, that's his name, Pickapeka, Picklepepepa, there we go. Pick a peck a pickle pa pa pa. That's his name. Okay, we got it. Anyway, apparently, according to the press material here, and I'm dying to hear this. I absolutely cannot wait until 2,775 to hear this. It has taken that long because it wasn't until 2,744 that the last surviving member of the Sibelius dynasty finally died. And now that the family is gone and no one is standing in the way and, you know, trying to protect his legacy and all of that folder all, they were finally able to disgorge the sketches of Sibelius's Eighth Symphony and, well, here we go again, and Picka Pekka Pickle Peppa pa was able to put them all together and give us the Eighth Symphony. It's at least, I'm told, as legitimate as Anthony Payne's completion of Elgar's third or any of these conjectural restorations. And it really ought to be fascinating. I mean, absolutely worth every minute of these 600 plus years it took for this thing to finally emerge. And we can all be grateful to pick a peck, pick, pick, pick a peck, a pickle, pep, pep, pa for doing it for us. Thank you very much. We'll see what else he wrote. I, I hope, uh, I think he needs um, a nickname or something. I don't know. That one's very, very complicated, especially the umlauts on the, on the double A's at the end. Well, you, you'll see. I'll put it, the name here, and you can, you can pronounce it yourself. You try and do it. So those are seven, seven, get it, seven of the most famous and most promising living composers of 2,775. By the way, of my list of the 10 greatest living composers, I'd looked them up um, and I couldn't even find any mention of them at all. Not a word. That was sort of sobering. It really was tremendously sobering. In fact, in fact, the entire 20th century seems to have virtually disappeared. I mean, the only, the only name I could find from composers we listen to today from the past 200, 300 years was Don Gillis. Go figure. I have no idea what must have happened in the intervening centuries to make Don Gillis the sole surviving member of, of the classical tradition of, from you know, the period like 1700 to 2775. I don't know. I don't know. But in the meantime, we have all of these splendid composers. Let's just run down the names once again. There's Phlegmoid Llewellyn Dern Proctor from the Independent Republic of Wales. There's Abragla Dominguez Tostada from Mexico. And then there's Sir from the planet Baxia. And Boahinma Amponsa from Ghana. And Shunli West from I guess it's now 
It's now Chamerica or something like that. I don't know. Now that China is the 63rd state, I, it fascinates me. I'm just dying to get into the history of that one. And then there's Grajtetia Obratitia from Plithvia, um, Poland, Lithuania, and Latvia, a totally new country. And finally, last but not least, the Sibelius Eighth Symphony, as completed by Pika Pekka Pickle Pa 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 Pa. I think I sort of got it. So there you have it, my friends. I hope that I haven't disappointed you and that you will be waiting for Tinnitus Classics to release discs devoted to each of these composers. It's going to be fabulous. I guarantee it. Absolutely amazing. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.